let's get to it. Um, I'm going to give you a quick intro, quick uh, introduction and context of what we're trying to do today. Um, mainly, we're trying to um, using uh, two, uh, two stories of two brilliant people. We're trying to show you um, different approaches um, in how, how we share things online and when we try to sell a product or service, when you're trying to share a mission or get people to buy into what you're promoting, uh, we, we, we're gonna make a dis take a discussion about it and um, uh, hopefully uh, come to some conclusions. Uh, what is the best um, for your particular startup, your business or um, your personal brand? Um, I'm going to uh, take part in the conversation because I also produce content daily for clients. Uh, as Johnny mentioned, uh, Greg is a professional videographer um, and a filmmaker. He will look uh, at what we're talking about from that perspective. And Stella um, is um, a big um, name um, in Uganda who helps uh, with her uh, non-profit and profit work with the um, 22 Stars company. Um, so uh, thank you guys for joining. Uh, Greg, Stella, it's awesome to have you here. We finally made it. Let's get to it. Thank you. And uh, what I wanted to do before, uh, we, before we get into the questions, I wanted to give people kind of a brief introduction to uh, who you are by asking you guys to um, tell the, uh, the people around, the, the startup grinders, um, about yourselves and your story briefly. And I would start with Stella, if you can quickly tell us, um, briefly tell us so, uh, your story and uh, what you're doing uh, in terms of uh, promoting and, and sharing the message on social media on your so, uh, side. so hi guys, my name is Stella. I'm yeah, happy to be here and see all of you. Um, yeah, and in Uganda right now. Uh, my background is first time in 2000 and people here on the ground. And I stayed in touch with them over the years and I started to buy jewelry from them, made from recycled paper. So that's like the for-profit business we have, but we donate like the profit. Um, yeah, and then it was 2012 when I came back to Uganda because I wanted to see how the people here were doing. And then to my biggest surprise, like the woman that I met in 2009, she went back to, to school, post-war victim, illiterate, HIV positive, free kids at a very young age. Um, yeah, she went back to school because she wanted to talk directly to me. Um, and that's like, yeah, how everything like started rolling. Like I had like an Instagram account back in the days. And I actually just started it like for 20 stars to promote her jewelry. Um, so initially it was one Instagram account and just the jewelry from Uganda. And then that grew at one point so much that I decided to get like a private Instagram account for myself, not private, like more like a personal one. And then we started also like a charity. So we basically, and like social impact certification. So we basically run four Instagram accounts now. Um, yeah, to really um, show like all the different aspects from the work we are doing. All right, so a lot of work, social media frenzy. Now, I just wanted to let you know, guys, that uh, Stella is in Uganda right now. I don't know, because the connection is a little bit choppy, they might have missed that part. Um, so yeah, she's in Uganda right now, um, connecting from- Thank you, we are like in uh, lockdown over here, so. The thing is, like, I'm not allowed to like leave this place and go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we'll we'll get into the the details of those Instagram pages, those Facebook pages, and the business itself. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to quickly go to Greg, and you can tell us um, briefly about what you do every day and how you um, share your message on social media, different platforms, and. Uh, promote your brand? Ooh, so first of all, I see all of you lovely people on this monitor, but the camera is over there, so I'll be kind of in between. Uh, my name is Greg from Create Greg. Uh, to cut a long story short, um, I was lucky enough to grow up pretty much on the movie set. So I spent pretty much 10 years in film industry, 
couldn't go to film school, but was good in math and physics. So ended up doing master degree in engineering and realized I don't want to do it. I don't want to, I don't want to be an engineer for the rest of my life. And then idea came up to move to Scotland. I couldn't go to USA. I always dream about the Hollywood, but no visa, no English at all. And visited Scotland, fell in love, and I said, why not to graduate and move to Scotland and see how my life would go? So last 10 years, living in Edinburgh, uh, doing different things, working on a startup when I actually met a lot of people to start a brand community. But I closed that chapter over two years ago and decided to come back to my roots in storytelling. And then when the idea of Create Great came up, because for me it was always like, you know, create videos, create myself. They hold the journey through engineering, filmmaking, working on a startup, building from scratch startup, doing bits and pieces, moving abroad. For me, it was always like creating the best version of myself. And it turns out like filmmaking, video storytelling is the closest to my heart. So I get the full circle and back to, to video and filmmaking. And you pretty much own the word create on social media. Just whenever, um, whenever someone uh, mentions the name, this word create it's like Greg <laughs> straight away I am I'm, I'm glad to hear that I just want to like dominate with this word yeah own it excellent That'll job. Be cool. excellent job so guys um, to sum up Stella is in Uganda she's using social media to promote her foundation and mm -hmm. the business uh, to sell the jewelry all over yeah. uh, all over online traveling and uh, so it's not just Uganda it's all over the world um, and Greg is uh, producing uh, films and videos for uh, UK market mainly, I believe. Um, and I also have a video production company. However, I am um, sometimes struggling to find time to produce content. So despite the fact that I make content for clients, I struggle with this myself. That's why we're here. And today we want to answer the questions of practicalities, of time management, of tricks and strategies, of psychological barriers. I hope those three, um, those three perspectives will bring something to the table and will come up some, with something at the end. So let's do this. And the first question is uh, to Stella. Uh, what do you think when people talk about content creation you have to create content you have to create content gary vaynerchuk talks a lot about this so when someone says create content uh, specifically for you what does it mean for the foundation and the business um, so obviously in our case like you always need to create content because otherwise people don't know what's going on and what we're doing um, but I would say like you need to create like good content. Like I always recommend people like rather post nothing than post something bad. So if you have bad content, like especially in my case, if I don't think about my posts in advance and I'm a, a very sick child with some stupid comment below it, and that would be screenshotted and go all around the internet, like that would obviously be much more harmful for our foundation than any good. So yeah, you need to create content, but if you're not sure, then rather create nothing than something bad because the internet, it stays forever. So it's not so random. It's not like you just make photos, you take videos just and you post it because it, you have to, you have to really think about it, right? Yeah. I, in our case, like, you know, like, I mean, when I used to be like uh, me, myself, Stella, like uh, traveling around when I started like the charity and the foundation and all of that stuff. Yeah, I just posted like my thoughts, but I also did not have like a big following back then. So, um, yeah, like nothing bad would happen, you know, but now, yeah, I have like responsibility, like over more than 400 kids and also like the staff members and so on and so on. So now if I would screw up, I would not just screw myself up up like i would screw a lot of things up so yeah so there's a lot of on at stake right now in yeah. terms of pr because yeah. it's very serious serious topic exactly. that we're promoting yeah. as well yeah. so okay. especially in our case we have like people also promoting for us uh, so we really have to be like 
somehow on top of it, but also do, uh, we should still like motivate people to create content because that's the other thing. If I tell people too much about stuff they should not post and things that can go wrong, then of course maybe people are discouraged and they're like, oh my God, like this is too complicated. I just wanted to post something, but I should not be political. I should not be this, I should not be that. There are quite some rules I would say or guidelines we have. Um, but yeah, of course I still need to like make it fun, especially for our like ambassadors, brand ambassadors, that they are still not scared to post. Um, yeah, so it's always like juggling a lot of balls in the air. Yeah, yeah that's that's a little bit risky. So uh, yeah, um, you have to kind of sometimes um, yeah just kind of put it all on the line. What about you, Greg? Uh, what do you think when people talk about making content and that you have to do it? Um, I mean, like you know, we live in the world when we share information about us, our business through content. It's just video, photo, and written. Um, the flip side, from my point of view, to Stella, I believe we're supposed to less moderate and put more of the content. What I mean by that, a lot of from business and people, this curated content, so we put just only the best parts, not showing the worst ones. So sometimes we build this um artificial perception of the business or, or person and um i don't feel i mean the like authenticity even if you make mistake like unless mm -hmm. it was like horrible mistake uh. I, I i think if people have a common sense and like you know know the business they're supposed to be more open and and, and post about it and even like if something goes wrong uh depends on the level you can all attend it around that's my point of view. Bella, no, you, I see you got a counter, counter. Hit me. Yeah, like I'm just like not over here. Like if you post the wrong stuff, you lose your visa in this country forever. You get, okay. get people killed. You know, like here, for example, like homosexuality is illegal in Uganda. So I cannot have any of my ambassadors, even if they are homosexual and I'm completely pro homosexuality, if they post like certain content, it's bad over here you know people okay. get killed over it and they were like riots last week and i was in in of them and if you follow the news you're gonna people get shot so it's not just like oh oopsie i made a mistake you know <laughs> so so okay. I, I, i've got a question so i understand this is a serious serious situation you have yourself in if, if that happens and um you know so we we in, in Europe, for example, we don't have those kind of issues uh, as far as I'm aware. But um, how would you find this balance? Because you still have to do something. So, so what, what are your guidelines? What are you using to guide what you want, what you don't want? Uh, because yeah. obviously you don't want to be like fully, like uh, go through five different people in order to post one picture. So mm -hmm. how, how would you guide yourself or others to, to make that decision, what to post? Yes. Um, so usually like, I just like, give like a lot of like examples, like especially also to our ambassadors, for example, like post pictures of food, post pictures of like nice things, like you're chilling at the swimming pool. If you post pictures like from the charity, then, then preferably like the adults. If you post pictures of our sponsored kids, then make sure that they uh, wear like the Eternity Stars outfit. So it's really clear for the outside that they are like our sponsored children. Uh, obviously like, uh, yeah, make sure like that the child is also uh, content being on the picture and then like avoid being on the picture with the child, you know? And then, yeah, I usually would tell them like those type of pictures, you know, like let just the foundation post it. So if you have them and they are cool, like just send it to us and I post it with the foundation account, but I would not even post them with my personal account, you know, because you don't want like that kids are somehow like, uh, how you call it, like props you know to like show off like oh, i'm doing good over here you know and show off with kids and being like the right savior like saving people over here just uh just to kind of give context to those who maybe are not quite sure stella if you could maybe let people know what the foundation uh, does so 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 people understand what you're promoting yeah all right so our um yeah focuses on local leadership education and entrepreneurship so especially like the local leadership part is like super important because uh, often people ask me like what I think or what I 
say and i'm like that is completely irrelevant like the people in the community like they are the ones like telling us like what to do what they want and so on and it's more like i'm just bridging cultures and i just try to communicate it to our sponsors um so that's also why i try to like keep us like somehow out of the picture but then at the same time we are necessary because obviously like european sponsors they have like more trust like if they see me or one of my ambassadors and we are people they can relate with you know so they know like okay like this is not like a corrupt organization or something um yeah so we work like a lot of kids like we have like this charity sending 400 kids to school so it's like long-term sponsorships and then we also help like the whole community with uh, entrepreneurship um yeah micro uh, loans nutrition program a medical pro program so especially with the medical program i cannot show you guys like the pictures of kids with malaria or people who have like a stone in the eye or got bitten by a rat in the eye and like give really disgusting things i mean i cannot like post that picture but of course i know that like uh, media wise disasters uh, attract a lot of attention so probably if i would show those pictures i know like most likely they you know would attract like a lot of attention but we still like don't do it we use other ways to yeah get attention on social media but not by showing those things because i think like it's dehumanizing and disrespectful especially for people over here even if they would give you their allowance like oh yeah it's cool like just post it on social media some people have no idea of the consequences like if we put for example their hiv status like online they don't even know actually that literally the whole world can see it you know so even if people give you like consent and they're adults like you're still quite careful with those things all right so we also don't want to stereotype like a whole country because you get this fantastic it's also like an amazing place you know so it's literally like if we would like visit london or berlin and just take pictures of the most vulnerable people like it's not that that represents the whole country mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really interested because um you, you seem to have this approach where um, you not faking anything and you're not trying to also, you're kind of ethical with your content. You, you're not trying to gain cheap, atten okay. cheap attention by showing all those bad things. Uh, and, and from what I've seen on your, if, if you guys wanted to check out 22 stars on Facebook, for example, I see the content is very uplifting. For example, the uh, videos of um, Ugandan women trying their, um, lack with business. I, I think those videos are really uplifting. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good approach. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like it's still like authentic in the sense that we don't like script it. You know, like the women can still like talk freely, and like I don't edit it and stuff. So like it's still I would say authentic and not perfect at all. Like we still do make mistakes, but just not like mistakes that would cost like people's lives. All right. Well, Greg, what do you think about that? Like, because ethics is important. When you're faking something or you're showing real stuff, what can you show? What do you think? What is good? What is acceptable? We have lawyers on the call. They will also be curious to know what you could like actually, uh, you know, uh, get in trouble for or not. And, and because they, if, if they have a law firm, they would like to show some content. And, and, you know, there's a lot of gray area there. So maybe you have kind of, uh, another opinion uh, about this i mean like you know the way how stella frame it like you know if you can put some content which can put people in danger it's it's completely ridiculous and stupid the sad things for it is like you know it show me what's wrong with the world in certain parts of the world i don't think like you know uk usa western countries have this kind of issue but me not being familiar with what's going on in certain parts of say of of africa like that's that's mind-blowing so that's a different story between like you know being transparent honest and putting people in danger it's like ridiculous stupid and i can't even know how to describe it i think like you know with big businesses and when um, there are certain policies like sometimes i work with the clients so the part of my contract i cannot reveal with whom i worked because it's not disclosed because they keep the privacy or they think i might put them in a bad light uh most is a big companies and it's like the way how we structure they've got more to lose from the content and gain so this they, they are very reserved but like how many these big corporate organizations got some of them who managed to navigate through it 
um, made the great content. But I'm talking about like, you know, a lot of people who don't put the content because they are afraid how people portray them, mm -hmm. how people, if you've got pure intention with certain photo video and people will take it wrong uh, or some people will take it wrong, uh, it's not not up to you. There was a, like video content I, I posted and then people like, you know, accused me or like, you know, or showing off or bad things addressed. Like there was no my intention to do it. Not at all. And I cannot mm -hmm. control them, how they respond. However, none of my content I produce could go to the stage that could put someone in danger of getting riot killed. That's a different story. It's completely different context. For me, it's like, you know, people are afraid of putting content. People are very reserved or just put the best content about the highlight. Like a lot of young people, that's like what you see in the highlight, especially on Instagram, it put other people in um, this negative state of mind when you just show the good stuff of your life. You don't share the bad one. So I guess this is a balance. Like uh, I'm actually curious um, what we're gonna really have as a conclusion for, for this question, because it's kind of like, Stella, maybe you can guide, like what is, what is the, what, what would you say would be the perfect guiding principle to use for, for deciding what is damaging or what is worth the risk or what is worth sharing um, in, this, in your case, for example? It's worth the risk. I mean, like, like what he said, like I would just not post certain things, so I would not like take the risk. Uh, like already men, uh, shared, like I would not like reveal like the HIV age status like of women or kids, even though I know like it's like attention seeking, like people would cry and you know, I don't know, like I would just not take that risk. If that's like somehow like an answer. Um, I don't know, I would say like, yeah, we definitely like really think about things like if it's like, uh, yeah, political correct and everything. Okay, well, um in that case, I would like to move on because uh, maybe we'll circle eventually to to kind of at the end to kind of have some kind of con conclusion to to that. Uh, but I would want to know uh, what do you prefer to do in terms of that? Because obviously that requires if, if you're not going to take the risk, um, it will require more time to build what you're building or if you're not taking you know if you're not relying on attention grabbing the cheap attention you have to be very patient building your brand and getting that message across and you're gonna get situations where you post something and it doesn't get any attention it doesn't get any views and you get get no likes at all people like one person likes it or three people like it and there's no sales no actual result um Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So how do you overcome this? Because it might be very discouraging if you're yeah. putting the work all day, every day, and you're trying something and it doesn't work. I mean, in our case, like we just know, like some fundraising topics are more popular than others. So for example, like child sponsorship, it's still like number one, like people see like a huge kid and they want to yeah, sponsor their child. So that's like the easiest. Then the older the kids are, the more difficult it already gets. Like finding like sponsors for teenager kids, it's more difficult than the cute four-year-old ones. Um, so for those, we obviously need to put like more of an effort in it. But I would still always say like I rather go like, oh, like for quality th than quantity, you know. So also with the yeah our sponsors, you know, like I rather have like our sponsors who are really committed and really understand like our mission and what we do and stay with us for like five years than being on some kind of like fashion thing how you say like on a trend and suddenly get like a lot of donations for like one month but then afterwards all those people would either uh how you say unsubscribe them their recurring donations or would stop you know like for us like we rather grow slow and like consistent that we really know like what we can offer the people and what they can expect from us, then that I would be like, oh, this month we have a lot of donations, but next month we have nothing again, you know? Because that was like the problem sometimes with the jewelry business. 
we would like uh, at one point sell a lot of bracelets and necklaces and have a huge wholesale order, like 7,000 pieces. And then another time we would have nothing. So you really cannot build on that. So we rather want like very like a solid base and the same for our social media. Like, yeah, we know like sometimes fundraisers, they just don't go. And then of course, like at one point, like we just stop them, you know, or we have like a lot of like general donations as well, but people tell us specifically, like you can like decide on, on what you put the money. So I'm like, great, thank you. Then if you don't, um, care in that sense where we put the money to we will use it like yeah on for example the secondary kids who are older and who are less popular you know right yeah. I, I like that approach uh yeah. quality definitely and you have a strong purpose so that also helps um yeah. and i also know greg is a big proponent of quality right like look at your studio i've seen your videos your videos are just uh, extremely um, you know, well put together, very high quality, and, uh, uh, you know, I know they take a long, long time to make. Um, so I would assume that you would go for quality um, and instead of quantity. Um, yes and no. Uh, it depends, depends on the, what kind of level you are, what you're trying to achieve. For me, like, you know, the quality, because the service I'm offering for businesses or, or other people it's like the quality video to stand out so if my video is not up to certain quality it will descend for me similar story to go to the gym and your pt will be completely not fit at all it's like it's my business card but when i said like not focus on quality because like who is judging quality and I remember when I started, you know, back in the days, like I was very into social media, I was using a lot of Snapchat. And, you know, the story was to produce as much as possible. Then I moved to Instagram, Instagram stories, which I push on a daily basis tone. And you cannot keep that quality if you put a lot of content. The thing is, at this early stage, when I didn't have this business model as I've got at the moment, was superb. What I've learned by putting tons of content allow me to go to the stage where I can create the quality and a lot of ideas I practice over the years come, come like that. And, you know, because now I, I'm, my business is on a different level, what things, what brought me content, what brought me to this level, it doesn't mean it will get me to another one. So for me, it was like, you know, to step up with the quality content and focus more on, say, longer form, like YouTube and distribution. But I think it's all depend If you are starting, and you are on the early stages, I encourage to do as much content as possible to find your voice to with writing. Like if you're starting, you will never write something like a book or post valuable. Write as much as you can. Shoot as many videos as possible. Like with speaking into camera, you cannot perfect. You just go and speak like crazy every single day. Once you, you get to the certain level, you will be better with that through the practice then you might think about, oh, cool, let's go for, for the quality. But there's businesses which build on quality, big brands, and there's people who are like, build like personal brand on big business, recording random video. There's a lot of big YouTubers. The quality is so low, but the value and the mm -hmm. consistency, Casey Neistat, it's not top quality, but he's been putting video every single day for months, and he built like over 10 million followers. And people love him for that. It's not about the quality. Most of the is below average, but consistency for him worked like a charm. But you look, yeah. I, I agree with you. Uh, it's it's important uh, both quality and quantity. And uh, I would I'm a personally a big proponent of quantity. The same kind of like um, building up your skill and improving the quality as we go. But um, a lot of people who start, um, and there'll be a lot of people here on the call as well who will not be as creative and they will not have that many ideas and they will lack um, you know kind of the creativity or, or just like they, they, they won't know what to post what would you recommend them to do in those moments because if you need to post a lot but you have no ideas and you have you don't know what to post you're going to be confused and kind of like not really feeling like doing it greg maybe you can go first um i mean like I've never been creative. I'm anti-creative person. 
I, when I work at the film industry, I work like, you know, camera assistant in production. I was a runner. So there was more like from technical aspects of filmmaking, production, nothing to do with creative. I did master degree in engineering because the way how my brain works, math, physics speaks to me, creativity, none, like zero. When I think about the, when I thought about the camera, I was excited how it's built, not how it takes photo. However, uh, when I want to go into film industry, I realized like I can learn myself to be creative. I can practice and applying it pretty much on a daily basis. I go to the level, the same with like when I went first time to the gym, I had no idea what to do. I just went through practice. So for everyone who's not creative, who don't know how to do like, what would you like to tell? What, why would you like to start video or start writing? Find the reason why and then like, read some article, start sharing your stories, get your iPhone, record something, share it, start practicing because what you do at the moment probably will be completely different down the line. But putting on work, when I mentioned the Snapchat store on Instagram, I make hundreds, if thousands of videos, short ones, and it will allow me to shape my voice, to find my creativity, and it will change in five years, in, or maybe in a year time. Um, I think, don't try to overcomplicate it. Don't be right of the month perfect. Like you don't know, you don't know your voice because you don't try to speak it. Try speak it. How people respond, shape it, educate yourself. Like it's YouTube. You can Google. You can Google. You can find everything on YouTube. You don't know how to record video. Look at how to record my first video. Boom, hundreds on YouTube. Get the book. Like read it, but then apply it and do reps, reps, reps. Yeah, guys, and if you have uh, questions particularly about this subject, hit uh, them in the Slido if uh, Emma is going to drop them. She's behind the scenes here and she'll answer your questions related to content or something that I might miss out. Um, so, yeah, the guys will answer that for you. Um, Stella, yeah, what do you think yes, about I, the uh, lack of ideas and how do you, how do you get inspired? Yeah, so I actually agree with like what Greg said, like just shoot like as much content as you can. And then if you want to post it, that's like another story. But even in our case in Uganda, we still would take of everything pictures. And then later on, we can still decide if it's like insensitive to post or not, but at least we have it, you know? Okay. And, and in some cases, we still might would need the picture, you know, to show like a certain sponsor or board member and so on. So it's maybe not like good for social media but maybe still good for other things you know so better too much i would say than not enough and when i was actually talking about quality i was not talking about the quality of my posts more like the quality of the followers and like the sponsors and the people we reach like that they should be high quality you know that i yeah i rather have like 400 committed sponsors so they must be high quality but the content would be post i mean um yeah, just like Greg also says, like don't overcomplicate things. Like especially when I started like 22 stars back then with the jury and stuff, like yeah, I was just modeling myself like our jewelry. Um, because I was like, yeah, before I will like invest in like a model and a photographer and make things complicated, like let's first check do people actually like the jewelry or not, you know? And then yeah, you just if you have like a writer's blog or in our case like a uh, and how I say that creative block you don't know what people like and just ask them like I spent actually a lot of weekends at the market in Amsterdam to just do research you know to just ask people like what do you think about our uh, jewelry do you like it or is it too colorful is it too big is it too, too small like what would you like to see on our Instagram account like do you want more interviews do you want more model pictures and so on and so on and so on and that's also when we at one point decided to like split our accounts and keep the charity the charity account and then our product account the sales account because people don't like it if they donate for charity to also still get like the buy this bracelet talk you know so um yeah like just definitely like check at one point like who are your followers and what do you sell them like yeah and otherwise just create like another instagram account for it that's a really good point because uh, a lot of people would put everyone in the same basket. It's my followers. So it's going to be like, whether it's a sponsor or whether it's like the buyer, it's my followers. So I'm just going to treat them all the same. 
but it's not like that. Okay, yeah, I, then, I, I love that because... <laughs> yeah. No, no, continue. And I realize people really want to know like the face behind uh, the brand, Vanity Star, so who's behind like the jewelry stuff, but also with the charity, they want to know like, is my money in good hands? Can we trust those persons or what do they do? So I also started to realize that I really needed like a personal account. So at one point, like, yeah, I changed like the 20 stars account, made it my personal account and just opened up two, two 20 stars account, like one for the jewelry and one for the charity. And uh, yeah, I realized that people want to know, like, what is Stella doing in her daily life? Like, how do I make money or what do I do? You know, people really find it like important because when they give money, I started to realize they don't just give money to the kids in Uganda, they actually give money like to us, like the people who run the organization and they want to feel safe and that they can trust you. And yeah, the more I post about my personal life, the more people also think they know me. I mean, I, I guess they also do know me. Like I am sometimes an open book, I would say. It's not that I have any like secrets to hide. So, uh, so I yeah, understand. I so just to kind of clarify for those who are listening, it's it's like the pages that you're using for foundation and business, they're all about foundation or business. And then the personal one, you can, you can still point, but you can mix them and kind of, um, this is why more free flowing. Exactly. So we also organize like trips for our sponsors, you know, to come to Uganda, visit our programs. So I have like, even like, yeah, this fourth Instagram account, uh, social impact nomads. So we did like for digital nomads, like vacations in Uganda, all of those things. And there obviously like I show pictures of laptops, sit with a laptop there, sit with a laptop there, <laughs> you know? But, but I mean like, come on, like I'm not posting those laptop pictures on a charity account. People would be like, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, and the same for the jewelry, they want to buy our bracelets and not see like us working in Kampala with computers, you know? But then obviously for the vacation, people want to know, do we actually have internet? and do we have electricity and so on, you know? So I really started to realize I cannot put everything, everything in one account. But then of course, like it can have overlap by times, you know, and also with my personal accounts, I can link to the other accounts and then either people follow all four of them or they just, just, they just pick whatever interests them more. Okay. Well, I'm interested in what Greg has got to say because I, you know, se several times I noticed you were posting like your holidays in New York or your holidays in Poland and uh, mixing those two on your page. Although I know that your page is your business as well. It's you. So I just kind of want to know what you think. Um, I, I can tell you straight away because for me, uh, building the real picture of Create Greg and um, a lot of people who follow me on Instagram or even unfollow because of that. I'm like, you know, for years, I like, you know, wake up very early. For me, create videos and create yourself, myself, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same. And for me, like, it's a, a lot of things about the personal development and making video is uh, my vehicle, I would say. So, you know, going to the gym, previously before Create Greg, I work on startup called Onman. So it's about, you know, creating sportswear brand. So I was more into um, physical activity. So I posted a lot of things and I realized it can build false picture of me. I'm not into like, you know, drinking or like fast food, but I do it. So then I realized like, don't false people like Greg is the guy who wake up every day at 5 a.m. and hammer the day and you feel, oh my God, I will never be like, like, no, Greg is like average human being or maybe just above the average, doesn't matter. When I'm in holidays, when I'm not grinding, relaxing, I want to post it. So people show that, yeah, Greg can have a beer or Greg is eating pizza or Greg is doing nothing. Not just only Greg, he's hammering up the morning or Greg is editing till late again and again. I put tons of hours, that's the fact. I'm more than proud to share it and encourage people to do it. But I want to balance that and see, yeah, I'm spending time with my amazing fiance. I really enjoy that. I'm sometimes waking up later. And that's, that's my biggest point. And I know a lot of people just portray themselves as like superhumans and a lot of younger generation like to do it, but it creates unnecessary pressure for others. Like, oh, I don't do the same what you do. 
I mean, that's not true. My life, it's virtual of a lot of things. Early morning, but late days as well. But what would you do? Like sometimes we all have those days or sometimes weeks or months where it's super boring and nothing happens during your day. You wake up, you do your thing, and then you go to sleep. And what are you, what would you share on that day? Like, honestly, I find myself sometimes those days are wake up, edit, uh, finish working, go to sleep. What would you share? Would you share at all? Would you like, you know, because some, some people consider their lives to be boring and uh, they are supposed to be sharing their business stuff and blah, blah, blah. But overall they, consider themselves boring and not interesting to other people so what would you say to that greg maybe if you can go um, answer that one <laughs> i mean like it depends something which is boring to you might be interesting to the other person for me from creative point of view i'm almost like i'm always thinking how i can tell the certain story better like two days ago i woke up like oh post something up the morning it would be cool side note i got it from Oh, forgot the guy's name, but when you start your day, like start creating before consuming. So for me, I was like, okay, my aim will be to post something like on Instagram stories at the morning. And I said, okay, I've got some lights, I've got some candles, whatever at the morning, and I've got like flowers. So how I can take the cool photo of it. Or I'm going for a run, how I can make my photo more interesting. So I'm taking photo of my shoes. I'm using a lot of boomerang, how to do kind of like quick animation through this kind of stuff. I'm just practicing as well. So I'm giving myself these small challenges, but not that I'm going to spend another one hour to, you know, get that photo. Make it quicker and through that simple things, majority of them, they are boring. But some of them, like, wow, because I've done a lot of boring and went through thinking process, I just said, ooh, that's actually cool. If I didn't focus on the boring, making the boring, I will never get to, to that cool. And the, the one, the guy who mentioned the Chase Jarvis, creative life, he was like, create before you consume. So uh, I said, okay, I started my day, I create something, I try to use my brain in a creative way. And yeah, that's a good to, to start off. Don't put some pressure. Like majority of my content is below average. It's, you need to sometimes strike like one video can change your entire life. One content, one post can change your entire life. But if you don't post the average, you will never get to the good one. Awesome. That's a good, good um, high note. What about you, Stella? Yeah, so I would say um, for people like who, yeah, how you said it, like have this like uh, obstacle of posting because they think they're boring or whatever. Like definitely like nothing is boring. I mean, like the most watched YouTube video was like this guy playing like uh, video games or what was it? You know, so I feel like yeah. that needs to be super boring, you know, so I guess like, yeah, we cannot judge what other people think is boring or not. Like some people have the craziest things they would like watch to calm down. Like maybe they would just watch like an, uh, a recording of like the rain for like three hours, you know? Um, so definitely nothing is boring. I would say more to those people like think, why do you want to be on social media? and always understand it's not for everyone like you don't need to post like you don't have to be on social media you know like if it's maybe maybe it's not your thing you know like maybe you should just like stick to uh taking pictures of writing or painting or i don't know you know like i sometimes have the feeling also this digital nomad lifestyle that some people are forcing themselves to be it but they hate it like they don't like it like they need the routine they like to be settled they want to have their certain group of friends. They want to go to the gym, like the same gym, you know? So, um, yeah, like before people like say they, yeah, don't know what to do or if they can do it, like they maybe should wonder first why do they actually want to do it and do they actually really want to do it? Oh, well, that's a pretty good point. Um, so the question that I wanted to ask you guys is, if you, because you seem very confident and out, like outspoken and extroverted, but did you have those moments where you were like questioning yourself and you wanted to break through, you had to break through some psychological barriers in order to post anything about yourself, a video, you were not happy with the way you look. A lot of people had, have an issue with that. They're like not happy with uh, 
the way they particularly look on a specific day. They say, I would post anytime, but not today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. Today, no. So uh, yeah, if you had to like deal with insecurities, anxieties, what people are going to judge, um, I'm going to start with Stella because I'm just curious what, what you're going to take this. Yeah, so I, I, I definitely like had that a lot. Um, like, especially like at one point, you know, when I started to realize like how privileged I am, just like because like I'm a white girl born in Europe, went to university, had parents with money and so on. And then at one point I really was super uncomfortable, you know, like working in those, uh, yeah, areas like in Uganda where people earn like one dollar a day, like hand to mouth. And then I was like, okay, and I'm going this weekend like on a safari, like, oh my God, like what are people like going to think about it? So I was like super embarrassed and ashamed for it. And it was like, yeah, some periods of my life, like I did not want to share that stuff, you know, till I started to realize that also the people at my project, they were like, oh, please like share with us like your stories. Like, how was it like to see a lion? How was it like to see an elephant? And I started to understood like they were like not jealous or anything, you know? they were just super curious and actually like not sharing my stories with them was actually like more bad than um that if i would have shared it but that was like for me like i had to overcome that and also then afterwards like i was traveling like yeah like in many countries and i always felt a bit like i oh, like can i do that or not until i realized like yeah why not you know and it's more sometimes this perspective like of european people like oh my god like you're wearing like a fancy jacket or whatever, like uh, you can't wear that stuff and you go to the programs in, in Uganda. But like, why on earth not? Like, do you think those people don't like to see a nice dress, you know? So just because they live hand to mouth, I should like show up with the dirty broken clothes. You know, even over there, like people are super fashionable. They also take really good care of their appearance, uh, appearances, like how they dress, you know? So that's like all those misconceptions sometimes like European people have about people living like in poverty. And then they pro project like, let's say like on me, by telling me like, oh my God, Stella, like how, can, how dare you wearing those type of clothes and showing it on Instagram? Like, how can you post a picture at a swimming pool? Like you're supposed to help people like they're in poverty. Like, are you not ashamed of yourself? And I was like, like, what on earth you know because that's exactly why so many people had like this uh, um how i said this image about uganda uh, that everyone would live here in poverty because people would be ashamed to share a picture at the four star hotel having a cocktail sitting at a swimming pool you know but that's like also part of it and yeah, in the beginning, I did not share those type of images until I started to realize that that's just ridiculous. And I don't want to be like certain big organizations that just post those horrible images of kids crying, super skinny, and just stereotyping like, like a whole continent even. So you're like an ambassador for Uganda, pretty much. Like showing, the, showing yeah. the, the good things, but yeah. also not over... Um, pretending like the, there's like, you know, not going to the extreme where people fake it, but showing the good things, uplifting things. Mm -hmm. I exactly. like that. I like that a lot. What do you think, Greg? Like, um, like did, did you have to go through this kind of like um, psychological barriers and questioning yourself and, and just like being afraid? I mean, like pretty much on, on a daily basis. I mean, like, you know, doubt myself, like, oh, my content is good, but I'm good enough in what I'm doing. You know, there's all, like, as I said, there's most of the time when you post something, like, it's not noticed, especially like, you know, this space is very crowded and with organic reach. And so I'm like, you know, say LinkedIn, TikTok is the one when you can get attention with the rest of them. Uh, Instagram, organic reach is in decline, so you know you have to go for paid ads. Uh, but I, what I love and I like to highlight it was Stella said like, you don't have to be on social media, you don't have to post. Like maybe it's not for you, maybe you, you can do your other things. Like, like even from business point of view, I know businesses who are very bad with promoting on social media. They they suck, but they've got tremendous businesses with the great results and you know happy people in it. It's part of me for me social media is part of marketing and 
it's something which resonates with me. It's something which encouraged me to push myself. The content creation for me is like going to the gym, like general, like repetition and being better at it. But that's my craft. That's part of my business, who I am. So that's my, but if it's not your thing, okay. But the, the flip side to it is like, if you consume a lot of stuff on social media, I would encourage you maybe start creating. Maybe you will use this time wiser than just scrolling num numblessly. Maybe it's something you dream of. You want to have like your small business or you want to travel the world or just try, try to post it. A lot of people build a business or build a lifestyle around it. And I don't know exactly what was the last story with jewelry, but I imagine like, as she mentioned, like starting like being a model, posting things like, instead of scrolling back then and doing, oh, it would be amazing to have like jewelry. Like, no, she started doing it herself and now she managed to turn it, you know, make it purpose behind it. And yeah, but at the end of it, like, like, what do you want to achieve? Like, like if you're not on social media, you're not a loser. It doesn't mean like you lost your life because you are not on, on, on Instagram. That's, that's silly. That's a good point. Uh, so mm -hmm. as, as, as I mentioned before, I uh, sometimes don't post at all because uh, simply I'm uh, busy and uh, yeah, I didn't lose out that much. Um, so yeah, there's always a balance. Um, you can always dip in and dip out, I think. It's mm -hmm. not a big deal. But what I wanted to follow up with on this question is, uh, we are all having, um, as three, we're having accents. And uh, I wanted to touch on um, the, the, the anxiety of speaking and producing content in English language, uh, if it's not your first language. Also uh, about looking different and being judged for, uh, you know, we happen to be white, but if somebody's from another country, they have to deal with accents, they have to deal with a different in their appearance and they have to overcome this. How would you like, how do you see yourself in that place? Because, um, yeah, we, in our case, it's accent, but so many other people have to overcome all the other ones, all the other things else uh, on top of that in order mm -hmm. to speak to people. Um, and maybe they could just speak to their, in their own native language or just force it and go all in in English. So maybe Stella, you can, you can maybe uh, talk about that. <laughs> so <laughs> in my case, like, um if with English, like I have no problem at all. Uh, but for like a long time, I had like really like a big problem with German. Because the thing is like, I was born in Germany, but I moved out when I was five years old because my parents separated. So when I moved to Holland, like after a year, I switched like schools again. So again, a new start. And I got teased a lot in the Netherlands with my German accent. Because back then, like 30 years ago, you know, World War II was not that long time ago. So sometimes when I was playing at my friend's place, they would be like, uh, hey, my grandma is coming. If she hears a German accent, like, oh, she will freak out. So um, at one point I lost the German accent. So I speak Dutch completely fluently. I still would also go back to Germany um, and speak German without an accent, but with so many um, grammar mistakes because I never ever went to school in Germany. I never took any German language class. I just know German because I was born there and stuff. But I really like realized that people thought like I'm stupid because I made so many grammar mistakes, but I didn't understood that I was Dutch. If at least I would have had this cute Dutch accent in my German, you know, they would have realized that I'm not like um, a real native German speaker, but now they didn't. So for me, like with accents, like German was like a big thing for a long time. But I think like, more than 70% of our sponsors happen to be German. <laughs> so <laughs> you can imagine like at one point, I had to switch, switch to German because um, especially compared to Dutch people, I would say like the Germans are not so great in English, at least not the older generation. Like I think we Dutchies, um, yeah, like our movies are in English. So also like my university books were in English. So our English is, yeah, I guess like better than from German people. So I had to start speaking German to my sponsors because they, they were not understanding like all of our English content. So that was like a really big hurdle. So I usually really apologize like 10 million times when I talk German in, in, at a conference or anywhere. 
but would you consider that an advantage or a, a negative impact uh, having that accent? I would definitely say that my case negative impact because yeah, people already, like already mentioned, they thought that I was like retarded because uh, my uh, German was so bad. So they just thought like, is she stupid or what, you know, with all the grammar mistakes and things. And um, yeah, you know, they would just think like I'm a dumb blonde or something. So I would say it was definitely like a disadvantage. Um, and it's also not fun. Like if you have to start a conversation and immediately like put yourself in a situation of, oh, um, I'm so sorry, let me explain myself. Like you just want to be yourself and you don't want to constantly explain yourself why you talk like that. But you know? on, on the other hand, like I'm thinking, because I, in this particular point, I'm kind of willing to disagree a little bit uh, because I believe, or maybe mm -hmm. it's just my impression in being in UK or Scotland where people are open-minded and they are kind of grateful of people, having people from all over the world and speaking uh, various uh, languages and accents that it, it could be an advantage and people appreciate people from other places and if they don't speak or write properly with their grammar correct so maybe that could be depending on the country um but overall in my opinion it's like actual advantage um yeah if you can the problem was people didn't knew i was from another country that was the whole issue like if i would have had like a dutch accent or if i would have spoken with an accent it would be a different thing but i speak without an accent that was the issue Okay, yeah. so you basically have to uh, start every conversation is, by the way, I have this accent. Or... Exactly. No, like, like I always had to start, by the way, I don't have an accent. I was born in Germany. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. But I already had to like apologize that I probably like would make a lot of grammar mistakes. So that was what I meant. You know, but... like it was just uncomfortable that every single time I was giving like a conference call in German, well, I speak to my sponsors in German. I always like start a conversation apologizing for who I am. Because if I don't, I know the reactions behind my back, you know, because I, I witnessed them and I heard them. And people really would be like, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, but on the other hand, what I'm thinking is because um, you see a lot of people who are um, of different accent and they come from a different country, they, that will be something that holds them back from producing content. So I'm just trying to find a nugget there, like a positivity that we can actually encourage them. Uh, Greg, may, maybe, maybe you can give us another point of view on that one. Uh, I like what you mentioned, Alan, um, the fact that UK, Scotland, it's um i never experienced like you know there was like random i remember it's like random person like you know criticized my english but i asked like how many languages do you speak and they say english i was like okay so i speak too fluently so well uh, i might make a mistake but it was like random person and uh, i can give a piece of advice because i don't see myself good in camera and i was super bad as everyone to degree hating my voice, like sound of my voice, like the worst thing possible. When I recorded myself for the first time, I heard my voice, I was like, oh my goodness, this is how I sound? And my friend said, yeah, that's your voice. And I said, oh my goodness, that's horrible. However, when we start building um, startup business, uh, there was two business partners back in Poland, two of us in Scotland. So we need to communicate a lot with regards to the business. And when you were typing messages, it was super time consuming. To speed up the process, we had this WhatsApp group and we start recording video. So I said like, okay, I will record the video and, you know, convey the message. And the first message, it took me one hour. He said like two sentences. And I was like, that's stupid. It's supposed to speed up rather than slow down. And I said, okay, they let them laugh at me. So I record the video and send to them. They respond with the video. And actually we started having this funny game, like recording funny video, talking to each other. And we've been doing for one and a half year. Over this one and a half doing in a safe group, I just got used to my voice. I realized I'm not as bad as I thought. I practiced a lot and then I said like, yeah, I can speak in front of the camera. Then it was like, you know, Snapchat, Instagram stories. I said like, I can record some in Instagram stories. It will be gone in 24 hours. I don't have million followers. Like I can be embarrassed. They will forget sooner or later. 
And the last thing I would do, if you have this thing, you're supposed to have this like inner conversation with yourself. Why are you afraid of like people would judge you for your accent? Like, like why would you bother some strangers like will pick on you? Like, like you would probably like not get advice from them. So why would you listen to critics? Like when you post video, I get some people who comment like, oh, I just wasted three minutes of my life watching your video. And I wow. said like, man, you wasted another two minutes writing this comment. I'm like, you didn't enjoy it. That's fine, man. And so have this honest conversation. Like, why are you offered? Do you want to post it? Yes. Like, you, you you don't like your voice like why you don't like your voice like why do you afraid of what other people think i think it's more deeper than just uh i don't like the sound of my voice hmm. i agree with that i think there's a lot of uh to this a lot more to this than just um making like you know photographs or taking photographs or videos or writing it's it's all inside here in our heads uh, so here's uh, what i have in plan right now we are going to q a in a moment i've got one last question uh, then emma takes over she will uh, bring hopefully some people uh, to the stage and they'll be able to ask some questions and at the end i also want to wrap it up with a final one uh, but for now i wanted to know uh, and that's just kind of in few words, maybe. Uh, what would you never do to get attention online? Uh, Greg, maybe you can go first. What would you never ever do to get online uh, attention? Uh, I mean, for me, it's not like, you know, going, not to getting attention. If I create the piece of content, make the video, and it will get attention, and it's not to me personally, but to my craft, to my skills, to storytelling, to the story itself, that's for me super. But someone appreciate or enjoy this two minutes or maybe learn something from my content, got inspired, whatever positive thing. But I would never did like a content to, to get attraction. It's not my thing. I know there's a lot of, you know, businesses, people, they, they can, you know, based on attraction, they can build a huge follow up. It's entertaining, uh, doing, there's a lot of YouTube actually channels, like doing stupid things, attract viewers. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't know. I don't see myself doing anything just for getting attention, for the sake of getting attention, me doing something stupid. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Fair enough, Stella. What I would not do is, uh, um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I mean, like, obviously, like, stuff, like, I would embarrass my family with, you know, or my boyfriend, I don't want him, like, to be embarrassed for me, or, like, I mentioned in the beginning, like, things that would bring, like, the people over here in danger, you know? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Awesome. Well, um, I'm, I would definitely not want to get naked online, that's for sure. Um, if you wanted to know my uh, my perspective um okay we're heading to emma emma are you ready for a q a mm -hmm. okay. yeah good go. to go yeah firstly uh thank you very much greg and stella it's been um a really great evening very interesting and just for you know personal perspective and kind of things to do in work as well so thank you very much so first of all we're going to go to deck who just you know always gets in there with the first questions um, so I'll pass you over to Dick. It's a real skill, Dick. It's a real skill every yeah. time. You're always the, you've always got the most upvoted question. Yeah, the, the, the skill is upvoting your own question first, and then everyone thinks it's great. So you can have that one for free. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Greg, Stower, obviously Alan for um, hosting. It's been actually an awesome night um, as a semi-marketing professional, I guess. For lack of a better word, it's a really fascinating topic. Um, so I'll, I'll shut up about me. So questions, I'm going to cheat a bit. Hope this is okay and ask kind of two and one. It's along the same lines. So I hear a lot of conflict when it comes to posting on different channels. And what I'm really referring to is should you post on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram? Or should you focus just on Instagram? And then I hope this second question makes sense. But essentially, if you are posting on different channels, so you are posting on LinkedIn and then Twitter, for instance, 
should you change your content or just keep it the same? So yeah, I know I've cheated with two questions. Hope that's okay. The what is the question? Congrats. Uh, was it for me or in general for both of us? Oh, uh, both, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stella, do you want to start? Okay, if we can get Stella yeah, okay, to, I could to start. start. Like, so it's like back in the days, like, what? Yeah, yeah, so, go. Um, I, I guess like if you have either a lot of time or a super high budget, like of course, like in a, ideally you can post on every single medium <laughs> within your content, I guess that would be probably the best. But um, I mean, it's not really realistic. Like I don't want to spend like the whole day behind my phone. And I also don't have like such a big budget that I could like um, outsource that the whole time. And even if I would work with volunteers, like I still have to deliver them the, the content and the pictures, you know? So um, um, yeah, so yeah, in our case, like our Facebook and Instagram posts are um, the same thing. It's like identical um on linkedin i post like once in a while twitter i completely actually stopped yeah the only thing like i still like do by times uh, very see some F value in it's like pinterest but it's also because i like pinterest you know like it's cool for like yeah the jewelry stuff especially you know yeah <laughs> so definitely do what you also love doing you know like if you don't love pinterest don't go for it like <laughs> yeah Right. Uh, cool. Um, I would first try to understand what's the narrative, what's the context of the platform, because something which would perform on Instagram and YouTube probably would not perform in exactly the same content on LinkedIn, on Twitter. As long as we understand the context of each platform, then we can actually adjust our content. With your deck plan, I actually like because you put a lot of effort. And even if you spread this content across the different messages, like coming back to idea of the business and the startup, like there's idea of low hanging fruit. So what activities will bring you the best results, especially when the resources are limited with time, money. So chasing all social media platforms um might be just waste of your resources so you then averagely you do them poor i've been there as well i tried to find a single one I've, I've got twitter accounts which actually i stopped using for a long time ago and it's like what things we speak to me the most and i said like long narrative storytelling and the youtube sounds like the best place for me to go so how to create the content for youtube and post it there and to get people more to my youtube channel i do not post this video to the other channels I put the snippets, I try to get people to that single source. On LinkedIn, you know, did something with the video, like create great tips for video. So it was like in camera pieces of advice. Sometimes the things which from YouTube was overlapping, so I can use them. And Instagram, because it's my personal flavor, I still like taking photos, sharing with them, a bit of more, more personal. Uh, and you can post across the old platforms there is like no stop but you will not get results if you focus on a single one with your business which i believe might be like you know twitter linkedin especially now with organic reach if you went all in and try to curate your content for linkedin specifically look at the others who do that very well and go all in I think you will yield better results rather than spread your message all over the place and get, you know, comes up here, like here. Uh, if you are in lifestyle brand, all in on Instagram, including paid ads. And I think focus on low hanging fruit. Where's your ideal client? Is LinkedIn, B2B, is lifestyle, is it Twitter person, like 50 plus year old Facebook paid ads? I would think about this way rather. That's great. That's really interesting. It's, I think to have a different perspective of who likes, um, like what channel as well, not to shy away from if, you know, if you like Pinterest and then to, you know, to use that. And that's great. Um, we've got quite a few other questions that are anonymous. Um, so if anybody would like to kind of put their hand up or message me and would like to say it um, live on the chat, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll just read them out myself. Is there anyone that would like to? You don't have to go on camera. You can just turn your mic on. 
No problem. I'll keep going. So, an anonymous one. For both of you, what's your process for creating content? Is there, so I guess, is there like a strict process that you do before you kind of put together, whether it's a video or, you know, writing copy or a photograph? Maybe Greg, do you want to start with this one? Uh, yeah. Oh, um, it changes. Actually, it, it evolved. When I started, it was like, you know, more spontaneous. Now I'm more deliberate what I'm doing. So for instance, with YouTube, so I've got this app called Notion. I think it's called Notion. It's kind of Evernote, Notepad, one of, one of this kind of, but I've got like a kind of spreadsheet when I'm jotting down idea throughout, like throughout the day, it's like, oh, that would be cool, you know, YouTube video. So I'm jotting this idea. Then because I decided to focus on this quality content and distribution. So I'm using actually software which kind of anal analyze YouTube and SEO of the YouTube. And then I run my ideas through that to check whether my idea is might be highly ranked, what's the competition. So once I've got title of this video, then I'm thinking, oh, which one I, which one, how I'm supposed to go about it, how I'm supposed to make it. So I've got like, you know, 10, 15 videos in advance. I've got some content recorded already and I try to like, you know, position itself. But as I said, it's a different stage for me because I was producing a lot of, lot of content, realized not this, a lot of content got me to the place where I am, but to go further, I need to change my strategy and step up and realize I need to be more deliberate with organizing and creating mm -hmm. specific content. With YouTube, which it's what I'm really driven recently, you have to produce the content which is optimized for SEO to get noticed. I can do tons of vlogs. No one cares about my life, especially if you don't have huge follow-up. But if I create content for YouTube, which they love about like, you know, Q&A tips, how to five, five things how to do this uh this versus that it's super optimized people go to youtube to find the answers so if you can provide that answers for that platform um you will start getting followers you will start getting traction and once you build that up then you can for instance go for the vlogs whatever you want to say but be more deliberate and i think it depends on the person some people go spontaneous and do tons of it and it works Sometimes you need to be more strategic. Yeah, so in, um, yeah, so in my case, you know, like the process is like stories, it's usually like more like spontaneously and stuff. And then uh, the pictures, uh, yeah, you have to think about it like a bit more, you know, see like what did you post? Like if you already post like, let's say a lot about nutrition, then we are not making another post about nutrition. So obviously like check, you know, that you have a lot of variation and yeah, like uh, Greg also like said, like take a lot of pictures or content or videos so that you have enough material available. Like the worst is if there is, let's say, uh, the day of clean water and then I don't have any picture available with clean water, you know? So, um, yes, yeah, so we always have like a lot of uh, stuff available. So on my phone, I make like create folders with topics so that I always have like content. And what um, we do a lot is... Uh, like tagging people, but not like crazy. It's not like I make a post and I tag like 50 people in it. It's more uh, that we make like thank you posts to sponsors or donors, or if we have visitors in Uganda at our project, like we tag those people in it because then they will like share our stories, you know? And that's what I found out was like for us, like the most powerful thing. And then I also really saw like we were growing like this, like the moment that we really started to tag people and put their name or image or something in there. That's, yeah, that's very interesting. Health. I've just been told only one more. So I will, ooh, I'll go for, I'll go for Johnny's question over mine. So Johnny, no, take it away. No, I'm you can't, you can't <laughs> phrase it like that. You're just making me feel bad. He's the uh, boss, so he's oh, only boss, only right? a tiny bit bad. I'm still gonna steal it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, maybe maybe we can squeeze in too. But um, yeah, Stella, it's for yourself. What are some of the unknown benefits and also curses of having 
um, a following of the size of yours, like you've got 20K just on your personal Instagram alone across the board. And also, Greg, yourself as well, you've talked about some of the pros and cons. You said, oh, I can share this because I don't have a certain following. Would that change over time? What's your thoughts on having a public profile with like a certain size of following? So I would say definitely like getting criticized. That's not fun. You know, like if you have like mean people and I obviously like come across them like quite often, like yeah, people will just really put post like mean things, you know, like you should start helping like people in Germany. They also live in poverty. Like why are you coming to Uganda? Like stay out of there. Like, oh, you're like one of those white saviors. Blah, 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 you know, like even I'm trying like everything to avoid it because I also don't like those type of people who would like come to the country only to take selfies with kids, you know, so um, yeah, you know, like that's like still like sometimes like hurtful, you know, if you get like those type of mean comments. Yeah, criticism, public, public criticism and yourself, Greg, what's your thoughts on like whether you think your message would change over time and um, based on the size of, of, um, of your, your following? To, uh, I will touch a bit of subject of criticism and someone, I don't know who said that, but if you are not criticized, it means you don't push hard enough, you don't speak up loud enough. And I, I got to the point when like, I've got this like, you know, mean comments, like in, in cell example, they're like, you know, super mean. And I'm thinking about this person, like who wrote that comment? Like how this person life must be very sad if the only joy of life or most joy of life you go through typing this nasty comment. And I actually stopped being angry at them. I just feel sorry for them. Genuinely feel sorry for them. It's like, man, like if you just go around and just criticize and like, let's be honest, none of them achieve something valuable because all people of like, you know, success in, in, you know, I don't know, sport, social media and business, they would not do it. Like, like they would not do it. So who can do this kind of comments? Like they don't know you. It's, it's so pathetic for me. And I just feel sorry for them. And there was, the, I remember <laughs> the guy who, who just wrote like, oh, I just wasted three minutes of my life watching your video. And it's like, man, you wasted another three writing that comment. So stop wasting your life and you would not change that people just just feel sorry for them and how would my content change um i think more like you know i think more of the social media as a um as a tool i'm getting tired of social media as well so you know get yourself off as i mentioned um hop off hop on and and it, it will be still fine and and i'm thinking about like how to use social media to do good, to grow the business, uh, to benefit, uh, to spread the, the good message rather than being the slave on, on, on social media. And I use a lot, maybe too much. And always thinking about how I can, my con content bring the value and um, it, as a drop in the ocean of the content can like, you know, bring the joy or someone say, oh, I love this shot or this is was good story, I, I like this video. And I will, I will follow and go this path to create more of this kind of content, build a business. So, you know, from financial point of view and then use it to create the content to, to, to bring more um, into, you know, value entertainment. I think that would be part for me to follow, but how it work out, I don't know yet. Yeah, only time will tell. Yep. I could squeeze in my last question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I guess this one would be different for both of you. So for me, it's so a lot of people um, now that marketing's heavily on social media for different companies, um, they'll also have their own account. So for you, like Stella, do you find it hard to separate your own content and then working with the business? And I guess for Greg, because your kind of social media presence is kind of create Greg, would you think about doing something external which isn't a brand about you like would you think about separating that Greg yeah, you go I first can, sorry. yeah I can stand quickly uh yes when two years ago when I left a uh, startup I've been co-creating with, with my friends I said okay like what's next for me and I said like oh go out and create and I said oh create greg sounds ridiculous as the name of the company but I, like you know i did the google 
and like creategreg.com is available or social media handles. And I said like, hmm, I let it sink in for one day. And I said, yep, let's go for Create Greg Limited. And two ideas behind it, I realized like for me, as I mentioned previously, create videos, create myself. It create is not even like creative because I don't see myself as a creative person, especially with analytic mind, but create is the verb. So create for the sake of creating and being better better at it. And the other thing was like, I it would be cool to label myself as like video agency, video company, video studio. But I said like, I'm the one person. Like, like so many people portray themselves as like, you know, have these good big names, but you are one single person. You, you might be aspired to build the agency. I get that. But for me, it's like how I can be the best in, in, in content creation and video and storytelling. And I said, being freelancer sounds not bad. So instead of portraying myself as a create greatness company, which maybe one day I said like, yeah, create Greg, sounds good. Let's build the brand around uh, me, Greg. Maybe one day I will want to follow like, you know, I agency model, maybe join the company or work for someone with the distribution. I decided not overcomplicated and be honest, be transparent and think, why not to go with this stage of my life for being create Greg? As simple as that. Well, it's worked up until now, so that's good. Yeah, so in my case, like with the business and the personal account, like I definitely like, have to the I think the internet's struggling. Yeah, Stella. I mean, like the foundation and business account, it's somehow always it really like, yeah, sometimes we are struggling a little bit with the connection. Again, yeah, we we didn't really hear what you said. The first bit, yeah. Yeah, so I just said, like, uh, for the business and the foundation account, like, yeah, it's super almost easy, I would say, you know, to, like, come up with content and post because it's just, like, so clear, you know, what we are posting about. But a personal account, like, yeah, I also sometimes struggle, like, what do you post, you know? And especially if you had, like, a bad day, like, yeah, you don't want to post, like, a happy picture or the other way around. Like, if, for example, we had some struggles at the foundation, then I... Also, don't want to post like a happy picture, or you know, so uh, or yeah, the other way around. But anyhow, um, yeah, the personal account I found much more challenging. That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I think some people might. Well, yeah, especially like I'm Corona times, you know, like normally, like I find myself mostly in in uh, in African countries um, or traveling, and I have to feeling like yeah, my followers, that's what they are looking for, you know, like seeing how is it like to like road trip through Africa. I've been like in more than 20 countries. And now with the lockdown, like I was mostly in Germany and Netherlands. And I was just like, yeah, what am I supposed to post about this, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's uh, good. Hopefully that'll change soon, so. Yeah, because I also really had like, and then, you know, it somehow felt for me weird to still post about Uganda and Kenya while I was not there anymore, you know, and then I started like to post more about Europe and then actually I asked my followers like, like, what are you interested in? And then most of them, they're actually literally sad, like they want to see more posts about Uganda. <laughs> and I was like, oh fuck, like I actually wanted to start posting about Europe since I'm here now. But then, yeah, what I told them was, you know what guys, just follow like the foundation account because for me, it feels like super stupid to like still make posts about Uganda if I'm not there. You know, for me, Instagram is instant. And um, I mean, of course, like I sometimes would post something that happened like a week ago, but not really if it's months ago or, you know, so, yeah. And then it's, of course, tough if your followers rather want to see pictures of you in Uganda and you're not there. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I love the authenticity of that. Um, it's, I love the, the fact that overall during the, the whole event tonight, uh, we were talking about authenticity and, more, and ethics and, and the good side of social media. It's kind of uplifting. I think we, we had achieved yeah. some good um, 
good uplifting message here and uh, so i'm before we go because it's quite late in uganda right now so we'll have to let you go stella i've got one last cheeky question to both of you uh since the, uh, the event is called how to get them to care so maybe one last piece of advice how get people to care about what you've got uh, to say or how to get people to care about your cause stella maybe yeah. you can go first so I would say like really like make them like part of the story, you know, like really try to like pretend they're over here sitting in Uganda, you know, without power, without electricity, having also like a cold shower. And I mean, in that case, obviously it's always the best. Like if I'm like the protagonist, like of the whole story and I show them like, oh, look, like today I'm, I'm freezing or this or that. And um, so really, yeah take them in there that they really think that it's them actually being there so that's obviously an effective one and then we usually like create like hashtags like this please give a shit hashtag when we needed to fundraise money for um our toilet program over here and then we ask like our followers and ambassadors to also like hold up a sign um yeah so it would not just be the message on our account but people would start spreading it into their accounts as well and make them feel like part of it that sounds very engaging. I would totally get on board. So I'm sure, I'm oh, sure you. Like sign. <laughs> I want to see a sign with you. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to then. Um, <laughs> it'll be it'll be all on YouTube tomorrow. So I guess I won't have any ch uh, any uh, chance to get um, trace that back. What about Greg? Oh, I would actually reframe that question, not how to get them to care. I would ask like why they would care at all. Um, like what's the value in what you giving, what you offer for people to care about it? And there's tons of content out there. And if we would start thinking the way like me, I, I, and share something which people would like to know, like, Stella mentioned, like, you know, being protagonist, telling the story, because there is, you know, a lot of people would like to see house life in Uganda or in some part of the world. And mostly people go to social media for, like, you know, education or, or entertainment. Can you provide one or both? Can you give them some value so they will be, like, you know, sitting hopefully at the edge of the chair and um, listening, listening to you? For me, like, can I create the content which people would enjoy it, will bring value to them? So if they decide to go for two, three minutes video or listening to me, would they benefit from it? If it would be just only me talking about, go, oh, it's, you know, Greg, you, you know, taking shower in Scotland. That's no value for everyone. And no one cares how to take shower in Scotland. Uh, but for people interested, like how to look in a different world, I... I think it's very valuable and think differently. Think how, why would people care? And if you ask, find the why, then then give them the why. Share your story, talk about this why from your point of view. And sooner or later, they will start care. Single people, you don't need one million. Million is cool. But if you got one person to care, that's, that's good enough. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I love that. Even that one person, maybe in the in the chat here already, that one person that's gonna make all the difference saw what you just said, and they could take action and take um, take that advice and and make big changes to themselves, and uh, providing some awesome content. And if anybody wondered uh, if you want to take a shower in Scotland, you take it quickly because it's very cold. Um, so guys, I'm blown away. Thank you very much. That was amazing. A great evening. I'm so happy with uh, what we went through and, and all the all the thoughts, uh, things that we learned. Um, so yeah, thank you very much uh, to the team, to Emma, to Joni, Stella and Greg. Awesome to have you. Uh, I'm sure we'll see your content. Um, you can follow uh, Stella and Greg on all of the platforms, Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Stella, it's 22stars.com, right? The, the jury website, yeah. And foundation, yeah. 20 stars .org is the foundation. Perfect. I'll send of course uh, an email and everything as well with some various contact information or like, you know, following pages. So if you guys want to get involved, um, 
then yeah, I you know it would be fantastic. And yeah, thank you, thank you, Alan, for for making this event happen. Uh, really, really enjoyed it, and thank you everyone for coming along. Last quick things, I want to say if you if you're not startup grinded out, then we have another fantastic event tomorrow night with uh, over at our Edinburgh chapter. So we've got the the wonderful Deck and Nick both on call tonight. They'll be running an event on socially conscious gifting with three um, fantastic founders representing different um, gifts, gift items, socially conscious. Perfect time running up to Christmas. They've got fantastic stories, so strongly recommend. And uh, and yeah, I'll drop a quick link in the chat at the moment. Uh, and we've also got, as a December event, we've, we've spent a lot of time this year adjusting to the new the new sort of reality that we all live in at the moment. But I've said time and time again, I miss your wonderful faces. I'm conscious when we put these events on, we get some amazing insights, but perhaps we miss out on some of the community we would normally have at the in-person events. So for those of you who are interested, who just like to sit down, sadly we're still virtual, but have a virtual catch up, a virtual chin wag, chat a few things business, a few things um, life, the world, everything, how we're getting along then on December 17th, we're gonna to put together a big virtual move around networking. It won't just be breakout rooms. We've got a few ideas planned, still being put, pulled together, but if that is of interest, um, then I'll drop a link to that side of things as well. Again, would be absolutely wonderful if any and all of you can make it, it'd be amazing to have you with us. So this will all be in the email I'll follow up with, but once again, thank you all for coming. It's been fantastic and uh, yeah, hopefully see you all again soon. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Good night, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.